Hi everyone, I'm Anne-Marie and I'm Sally and welcome to your ice assembly for the week. So we're going to start off today's assembly with an experiment. We're going to see how long different things take to melt. Ooh. And part of any good experiment is predicting the results. So Anne-Marie, I've given you five different uh, items here written okay. on our things. So we've got chocolate, mm -hmm. we've got cheese, yep. two of my favourite things in the world. Uh, we've got ice cream. Mm -hmm. We've got ice on brand, uh -huh. and we've got butter. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how long each one takes to melt. But they will probably melt at different lengths of time. Okay. So it's your job and my job to predict what order we think they're going to melt in. From oh, right. the fastest to melt to the slowest to melt. Okay, so fastest this end, slowest that Yes. Oh, right. Okay, well, I think fastest to melt is going to be ice, so I'm going to put that one okay. there. And then I think ice cream, because they're quite similar, um, both quite cold, so I think they're meant to be kept cold, but will melt quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Then I think butter is going to go pretty fast, somewhere in the middle. And then I think chocolate will be next to last, and then cheese, I think, will be the mm. slowest one. So I've got ice, ice cream, butter, chocolate, cheese. Cool. I look forward to seeing what the order's going to be. So I think I've got a slightly different uh, prediction to you. Okay. I think ice cream might melt fastest. Mm. Only through experience, eating a lot of ice cream in lockdown, and it just melted really fast. Mm. So ice cream first, and then I'm going to say butter. Ooh. Because it gets quite spoody very, very quickly and it's got lots of fat in it, so I think that. Scientific term, that's spoody. Mm -hmm. Spoody, mm -hmm. yeah. Put that in your textbooks. Right, then ice, because it's quite dense, so I think it might take less time. Okay. And then chocolate and then cheese, I think. Oh. Chocolate and cheese. Okay, so mm. we've both got quite different orders there. Sally's gone for ice cream, butter, ice, chocolate and cheese, and I've got ice, ice cream, butter, chocolate, cheese, which is a lot of similar words. I just say going around my brain. <laughs> but it will be interesting to see which one does melt the fastest. So I wonder, what do you think? Maybe have a little think with the person next to you. Maybe see what you can come up with. Which order do you think? Or who do you think out of me and Sally has mm. got it right? So have a little think and we'll come back and see the results very, very soon. Right, item number one, some delicious Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Ready, set, go! Okay, that looks, apart from a spongy bit of cookie dough, that ice cream looks all melted to me. And the time was seven minutes, point thirty-three seconds. Okay, the next thing is some butter. Okay, here we go. That looks pretty melted. That's the butter all done. And that is eight minutes and nine seconds. And here's our next item, some ice. There we go, that is the ice all melted. Final time was 11 minutes 33. Next up, my favourite, chocolate. Okay, so we prodded the chocolate a bit and they're still quite solid. So we're, we're going to call that because the time so far is 32 minutes, 0.14 seconds, and they're still solid. And the last object, some cheese.
Okay, well, it is all melted. It's kind of a solid cheesy lump, but it is melted from what it was, so we'll count that. The time is 35 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, everybody, here we are. Welcome back. We've done our melting science experiments and Sally's looking very smug. I feel very good about the results of this. <gasps> looking back, shall we see what the timings were, Emery? Yes, let's. So the one that was the fastest melting time was ice cream. It was with ooh, 7 minutes 33. So ice cream was the fastest. Mm -hmm. Next one was... Butter! It's looking pretty good for Sally so far, isn't it? And it did get spoogy. It did get quite spoogy. It was exactly the right word. Well, the next one was the ice. Unexpected then. Unexpected. Mm. I think Sally was right. She talked about how dense the ice was. Um, see, ice not very spoogy. Um, and ice feeling quite dense right now. Um, and then we had the cheese. That came in there at a whopping 35 minutes mm. and 43 seconds. But shockingly, chocolate right at the end there. Now, it didn't actually fully melt. We decided to call it a day mm. at 32. So really, it should belong in here if we were just going on these timings. But it, it just, it, it stopped. It just burned. It just burned. It didn't want to melt anymore. Mm. So, Sally, got it. I'm really happy with that one. Can you believe it? Well, well done for your correct Thank guessing. Thank you, and I think you did a really good job too. Um, well, I'm really uh, interested to see if you got that right, or maybe you've learned some things today, like us. So the reason why we've done this experiment is because in today's story, we're going to hear about three people who didn't melt under pressure. They were in a really hot situation, a really difficult situation, but they stood up for what they believed in and they kept on going. So let's have a watch of today's story. Do you think King Nebuchadnezzar would have learned his lesson from last week's story, but it seems like he wasn't very good at listening. So today's story involves another statue, but not a dream statue like the one he had last week. This time, a real statue like this one here. And it was as tall as this. And it was as wide as this, from me to Sally. Hello! And it was made of solid gold. He called all of his leaders, governors, captains, bankers, judges and rulers to see the statue and issued his command. Hear ye, hear ye, people, nations and all those of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. When you hear the sound of the horns, the flutes, the lyres, zithers, pipes and all other musical instruments, you must bow down and worship the gold statue. Anyone who doesn't bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. People from all over Babylon were there. And when they heard the instruments play, they all bowed down to worship the statue. Then some people came up to the king to meddle. They said, Our king, live forever! Didn't you tell everyone to bow down and worship your statue when they heard the music? Yes, I did. And anyone who wouldn't would get thrown into the fiery furnace. Yes, that's right. Did you know there are three men who aren't following your orders? They won't bow down to your statue and they won't follow your gods. What? The three men were brought to the king to explain themselves. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Is it true you won't worship my gods or bow down to my statue? You have one more chance. If you bow down right now, we're all sorted. But if not, you'll be thrown into the fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered the king. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves to you. If you throw us into the fiery furnace, the god we serve is able to help us. But even if God doesn't save us, we want you to know that we will never worship your statue. The king 
was furious. I am furious! And ordered that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than normal. Then he commanded that the strongest soldiers tie up the three men and throw them into the fire. The fire was so hot, the soldiers who threw the three men in died from the heat. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was so surprised, he jumped to his feet. Did you see that? Pardon? O King? Didn't we throw three men into the fire? Yes, that's what the paperwork says. Look, there are four of them now. They're not tied up anymore. And one of them looks like the son of the gods. And lo and behold, that's what they saw. The king called out to the men. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out of there! So they did. Everyone crowded around to look at them. And they weren't burned at all. They didn't even smell like smoke. Then the king said, Praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He sent an angel and rescued his servants from the fire. They trusted in God and refused to obey my command. They were willing to die rather than to worship any other god or bow down to my statue. The king issued a command that no one could say anything bad about the god of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And he promoted them to rule over more of Babylon than ever before. What a story, going from the fiery furnace to a king realising that no matter how powerful he was, God was stronger. So what can we learn from today's story? Well, first of all, I think we can all tell that King Nebuchadnezzar was a bully. He wanted everyone to do what he wanted them to do and he wouldn't take no for an answer. Now we all know it's important in our relationships and our friendships that if someone says no or they're not comfortable doing something, that we don't force them. But Nebuchadnezzar wasn't like that. He wanted to force everyone to do what he wanted. And that really made things difficult for our three friends. That's right. So King Nebuchadnezzar isn't really a good role model, mm. but I wonder if there is anyone else in the story who is. And we'd like to suggest that that's the three friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So what can they teach us for our lives today? Well, it's pretty unlikely that anyone's going to be building a massive statue of themselves and telling us to bow down to it. But there might be times when you look around and everyone either on the classroom or on the playground or just anywhere around you where it looks like everyone's doing the wrong thing. And we might feel pressure to join in with that. We might be worried about doing the right thing and standing out from the rest of the crowd. Just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego must have. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had a really big choice to make. Whether they were going to follow the rest of the crowd or stand out and do something that they believed was the right thing to do. It must have been really hard, but as we said earlier, they didn't melt under pressure. They believed that standing up for what they believed in was the right thing to do, even though it wasn't the easy choice, and even though they wondered whether it might cost them their very lives. So, what helped them through? Well, they had the knowledge that even though the king was powerful, that God was stronger. And no matter what the king threw at them, God could help them through. They weren't alone, and they would never be alone. And Christians believe that we have that promise as well today, that no matter what situations we come across, that we can always ask God for help. And also, they had each other, didn't they? Oh yeah. It wasn't just one person, it was three people. And I'm sure that they encouraged each other. And when one was having a really tough time, that the other two buoyed them up. And isn't it great in our lives that we have friends and trusted adults who can do the same for us? I wonder if you ever find yourself in a situation like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when you feel pressured to follow the crowd. Maybe you can find somewhere you can go to and say, hey, I'm having a hard time. Could you encourage me? And maybe you could be that encouragement for someone else. So two things to remember from today's story. First of all, we can help encourage one another to keep on going strong when things are difficult. And secondly, we can always ask God for help.
let's finish up with a time to think and a time to pray. If you'd like to pray along with me, you can close your eyes, maybe put your hands together, maybe watch the image on the screen. Maybe you'd like to spend this time thinking about those people around you who help support you when you want to stand up for the right thing. Maybe you might like to think about asking God to help you in those times when you have to make a tough choice between what's easy and what's right. Let's pray and talk to God. Dear God, we thank you that you see every situation in our lives. Thank you that you are always with us, even though we don't always realise that you're there. Thank you for today's story, where we see that in a really tough situation, you were right there with people who made the choice to trust in you. Please help each of us to trust you. We're sorry for the times when we haven't stood up for what we know is right. Help us to change that in the future. And the next time we have the chance, please give us the courage to stand up and stand out for what we believe is right. Thank you that you are always there to help us in big situations and small situations too. Amen. <laughs>